Hey guys and welcome to another tutorial in After Effects. So today I wanted to focus on using the essential graphics option inside of After Effects. Now I don't think this is really in a, a lot of the older versions so maybe maybe 2014 or so and above is where you're going to find the essential graphics option which is pretty cool. I've never really, I've kind of just ignored it um, until recently when I'm deciding like okay I'm making these templates maybe that is something I can use and lo and behold it's fantastic and uh, I really enjoy it. So I wanted to um, just kind of show you how it works and how you would set it up if you want to maybe if you're building projects for your church and you need to pass on the, the files to somebody else or something and at the same time we're going to sort of get an inside look at a pixel preacher projects or the after effects files and photoshop files just in case if you've never purchased any one before and you're not really sure what it all comes with or how it all works maybe this will uh, sort of show you um, what to expect whenever you download one so Let's dive into After Effects and talk about essential graphics. So basically how we usually do our projects is we build out a, an animation and there's some t lines of text in there and those can easily be edited and it, you will quickly update and you can then export your own project. But I tried to make this, you know, in the very beginning and some of our other projects we made it to where you would just have to go into, you know, maybe a, you know, go in like a, a folder like this, a text composition and go into line one and click on it and change the text, which you could totally do that. Uh, so we could change this to, you know, every day and you can maybe move it down, you know, kind of get in the center like that. And that's all, that's all well and good. It's really not that hard. Um, but I thought let's maybe make a little panel with essential graphics and make it a little bit easier. So I'm going to undo that and we'll go back and check out the central graphics. So let's go back to the main render and that way you don't have to really jump around a ton between different compositions. So, uh, let me find that scene again. Here we are. So, it says day in and out we are tempted so let's go here to where it says day in and day out and I'm gonna go up here and right here I have pretty much all of our scenes laid out in this in this little panel so I'm gonna click on where it says scene one calendar where all these pieces of the calendar are falling I'm gonna to toggle this down and right here we have our source text where it says day in and day out we can change the uh, font the font style um, we can change the size, we can even maybe move it around, even change the color. So let's mess around with it. So I'm going to click on where it says day in and day out. We're going to highlight that. I'm going to put every day. Just hit tab to move on. And you can see it changes right there. So then I could go to my position and I could change my X and Y axis. So I'm going to maybe move it. Let's say I move it down. Well, let's see, go this way. There we go. So we're just dragging and update it that way. That's about the center right there. And then we could go in and change the text color. So maybe I could make this um, the red from the calendar. Okay, so quickly updates, pretty cool. It is even updating that shadow that's in the back as well. Um, now we could also change, I've even set up where you can change the background color of this entire scene. So let's go and make this uh, maybe just just strong white. So obviously there's some color correction in there, but you can see you can change the color pretty easily. Uh, so let's make it like a green. Whoops, that's pretty terrible. But you can see you can quickly change the color, um, and a, a lot of that depends on how you set up your project. But um, there's pretty much anything that has any sort of parameter or keyframe or whatever um, you can you can add into a central graphics and make uh, a little template out of it. So we could again we could change the font to you know something that we all love, and it updates it just like that. So pretty cool stuff. So. Uh, let me undo this to get it back to normal. All right, so let's toggle through some of these. Uh, a lot of these are really the same. They're all just kind of set up to change the text. Um, you know, you have the background color and the scale and go all the way down. Uh, then we have the series title. So, you know, this one is a little bit different because it is a, it's a certain type of font that doesn't really work in After Effects for some reason. So this is an SVG font to get that, that nice cool brush stroke look. And so we would need to update the Photoshop file in order for this to actually work. Um, there's also the countdown in here. So we can go in here and talk about the countdown. So we can make it 30 minutes, we can make it 15 minutes, um, change all the different uh, pieces in there. And this turns red because it's basically saying this is not in the main composition, but that's okay. So if I go to countdown and we'll open up countdown, so let's see here, let's see what comes up. So there's the 20 minutes, 29. So if I move this down to 15, so now my countdown is gonna start at 15 and I can just go to like right here and be done. So pretty fun stuff. So real quick, let's look at the title. So I'm gonna go back to final render here and uh, I'm gonna also update the uh, title here. So I have the Photoshop file open 
And here is a, a glimpse of the inside of the Photoshop file. So we have our main graphic 1920 by 1080, a square graphic for social media, and then a social story. So, so we have a linked layer inside of each one of these artboards that is linked to the same composition. So if I go to main graphic and we have our text folder right here, I can open that up and then we have a title. So I'm gonna open that up and here's our not today Satan. Then we have this text shadow down there and that'll all update the same way. So I'm gonna double click on this little linked button right there. And that's gonna open up another composition and here it is right here you can't really see it very well so i'm going to turn on this background layer so you can see what we're doing and then we can go in here and change this text as well so we have our splatter layers and our text so we could say overcoming sin so i'm going to go into our text and i'm just going to turn these off so for just really quickly we'll just do overcoming turn on this one and do send like that okay so we could go in and we could do all of our splatters and move those around to where we want those to go um, but for right now we really don't want to do that this is really not what this is all about but so if I wanted to save this I would just turn this layer back off hit save go back to my uh, main Photoshop file and all of them have been updated which makes it super easy so hopefully we would move all of our paint splatters where they need to go, but you can see that it's quickly updated. So now if we go back to our After Effects file, let's see if it updates as well. Boom, there it goes. Uh, that just shows you how quickly and easily it can be uh, quickly updated. So let's dive into Essential Graphics and talk about how to actually make this work. So I'm gonna open up a new project. Let's go to File, New, and New Project. We don't wanna save any of that. Click on New Composition. 1920 by 1080, all this is fine, hit okay. All right, so how do we do it? So the first thing you probably need is this actual window. So if you don't see that window, you just go to window and then central graphics right here. And now we can go and start putting some stuff in. So let's make a, a just a, let's do a text um, composition. Let's make another composition called text one and we'll hit okay. So this will be our text right here. So I'm gonna highlight this and I'll just put my name. That looks good and we'll just go ahead and center that up, make it nice and neat. Do just a white text, hit OK. Move that down to the center like that. You probably actually would want to make not a text box because if you need to make some adjustments inside of your uh, essential graphics, then that text box may cause some problems. So I'm just going to go up here and click instead of click and drag. So now I'm going to write my name. OK, so that looks good. And let's go back to our comp one, which should be our main composition. So then you have the option to select a composition. Like where's what's this? You can, you can what we've done is we put all of our editable layers inside of this one panel so you can see it um, but you can go through and select all these different compositions and set up different windows but I'm just gonna do it all in comp one that way it's all laid out right there now what we would do is I would go to text one so I'm gonna click on my name I'm gonna hit you a couple times to reveal sort of what my different parameters are and now I can basically drag this source text up here and make a new essential graphics template kind of start off and there it goes so now it's gonna give you this error where it says um, this is sort of unrelated to that composition that you have selected because it's not in the composition but this will go away once we actually add it to the composition so I'm gonna hit OK we're gonna go back to comp 1 and now I can just put my text in here and you can see that there's my text obviously I can't click on here and edit it but I can go up here and change this to you know Alex Trebek or, or whatever right so um, then we can go in and click on edit properties and you can tell it what properties you want to be able to edit. So we can do different font selections, the font size, uh, faux styles, which I guess would mean like drop shadow and, and things like that. So let's hit OK. Oh, OK. So I guess faux style means like bold and, and uh, italicized and things. So um, so that's how you would do with the, the text. And then you can go and you can do like we can just do some colors. So let's drag in a new uh, solid layer. So I'm going to do uh, 1980. We'll make this uh, red. And hit OK. OK, so we'll put this below our text line. So this is actually a good example of what doesn't really work inside of Central Graphics. So I've added this red solid, but inside of this uh, red solid layer, there's nowhere I can change the color. The only way I can change the color would be to go into that, that solid layer settings and change it here. But I can't, uh, I can't add that to uh, our Central Graphics. So what I would do is I would probably just make this solid layer. Then I would add a, I can do a fill or something like that so I can go to effect generate fill right there 
So this is going to add a an effects to this uh, layer. So now I just add this color correction uh, parameter to this essential graphics, but I don't think it'll let you drag it from the effects panel over for some odd reason. It doesn't want you to do that because you have to go through the actual timeline. So I'm going to click on the red solid and toggle these things down here. Now we have this effects option. We have our fill and I have our color. So now if I click and drag the color up here, boom, I have our color. So we can say, you know, background color one. And I can go in and change that quickly and easily. Boom. So then you could go in, you could uh, change some of the, you could maybe group these together. So you can add a group. I can call this scene one. Then I can drag these options into scene one as well as the background color. And then sort of close that up just like that. You could even add a comment so we can click on comment and we could say, you know, whatever you need to put here. Just kind of like I did with the Not Today Satan title where I said, hey, you need to update this inside of Photoshop. Okay, so really, again, anything that has a parameter to it can be adjusted. So if I go into this red solid, it has transform properties. So we could go, we could bring the opacity in here. You can change the opacity back and forth. Um, let's see, let's see what else we could do. We could maybe, let's, let's mess around with something a little bit different. So I'm gonna turn this off delete that that's fine let's do actually let's do a new solid layer we'll call this fractal noise and we'll go to effects we'll go to distort no let's see we'll go to noise go to fractal noise here and now we get this sort of cloudy stuff going on put this down here so now let's see what we can drag up there effects fractal noise so we could do let's see if it'll let us do like noise type yeah, so this doesn't, some things will work, some things won't. Let's see, I guess maybe if it has maybe like a blue number, these little drop downs don't quite work very well. You could probably adjust the evolution of it. The only problem with some of these is you can't really keyframe them here. So that's gonna be a problem if you needed to set some sort of keyframe uh, that doesn't quite work. So overall, pretty cool. There's, there's some limitations, but uh, for the most part, if you're building some sort of template, this is super easy to use and a lot of fun. You can also, if you just are are terrified of uh, After Effects, you don't really want to mess with it, you could go in and uh, make a, uh, you can do this export motion graphics template and it will create a a template that you can use inside of Premiere. So uh, to me, it's it's more trouble than it's worth just because you, you can do it in here really, really easily. But if you wanted to, you could click on the export motion graphics template It'll compile everything and then you tell it basically where you want it to save and then you can go into Premiere, open that up and um, edit it inside of Premiere. So let's take a look at that really quick. So I'm going to do Premiere Pro and I'll pull that up. Okay, so here is just a empty blank slate for Premiere Pro. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to click on this graphics button right up here. And that's going to give me a few more options once it loads and everything. It's going to give me a few more options over here. Uh, Premiere Pro really comes with a lot of basic lower third templates and stuff that you could use. Uh, I've never really messed with them that much, but uh, uh, there's a lot of stuff in there that you can use that's sort of, sort of kind of hidden from you. Okay, so this pops up. So a lot of these here are all just templates that you can use. Uh, really pretty clean, pretty nice. Got some uh, film credits in there, some different sports things that are pretty cool. So again, I've never really messed with these, but have at it. All right, so it took me a second to figure out how do I get this over here. So I kept like double clicking on it, nothing would happen. I think what you have to do is make a sequence. I don't think I can just drag it. Yeah, it gives me a little error sign. So what I did is I made a sequence here and I'd say, hey, I'm gonna do a 1920 by 1080, 24 frames a second, hit okay. And now I have a sequence ready. And then I think I can drag this down here. There it goes. And I can let go. And it says, hey, do you wanna match these sequence settings for the project? And we'll just say, yeah, we can go ahead and change the sequence settings to match the project. It'll give it a second to load in everything. But again, I don't know that this is really necessary if you're gonna be messing with these templates, but um, if you feel like you have to, then this would be good. But this is great if you have maybe footage or something you need to edit and you wanna throw in some lower thirds or some teaching slides or something, this could work. Okay, so it looks like this is loaded in. Now we'll just kind of scroll through and see what happens. I don't think Premiere Pro really likes After Effects stuff a lot because it's having to process everything that After Effects does. Okay, boom, there it goes. So here's our project and it pulls up pretty much that same panel that we saw inside of the 
After Effects Essential Graphics Panel. So I'm going to click on Scene 1 Calendar, open that up. So here we have our lines, day in and day out. Uh, this is the line right before this one. So we'll go to Calendar Line 2, and here it says We Are Tempted. And we can put, I'll just put You Are Tempted. And I'll hit Tab, and boom, it updates right there. But one problem that I do run into is that the actual Photoshop file that we have linked in there isn't seeming to be updating like we want it to be. So that might be an issue. So you may want to stay in After Effects for things like that. I'm not really sure on the workaround for that, but hopefully if keeping it in After Effects it would be just fine. So anyways, that's a, this is just a great way. Just for, I just want to show you what Essential Graphics was, how it all works, how you can easily plug it into your project, and it makes things a lot easier for updating text. Um, that's really all I want to show you. I'm going to jump back into After Effects. Feel free to um, uh, leave the tutorial now if you want to. But if you're if you're kind of curious about uh, expressions and some of the expression controls, I'm going to go through the little ones that I know and how do you actually use them. And it's really with the central graphics, you don't really need to for some things, but it might be helpful. So um, again, if this is all you want to figure out, then thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Um, I'm just going to mess with some essential graphics stuff or some uh, expression stuff right now. So let's delete these here. And we'll just turn this, we'll just delete this one, we'll stay in comp one. So I can close this essential graphics window, close panel, and we'll go to animation. Let's see, let's go to window, and we're going to go to effects controls there. Actually, it's already up, so I'm going to move this over right here so I can see it. I like to keep this over here so I can see. All right, so what are expression controls? Up here in the effects panel, you have expression controls right there, and I can't select it because I don't have a layer, so let's make a new solid layer we'll just call this um, blue doesn't really matter we're going to change the color anyways hit okay hit okay boom okay so let's see so i'm going to go to effect oh, let's click on blue effect expression controls so here you have a few different options only there's only a couple that i actually use so i'm not going to go through all these um, i mess with slider control um, point control maybe I've done a couple times and color control and checkbox is kind of cool too so um, let's mess around with the color control and click on color control and you can see that nothing really happens because this isn't you got to link something to this so there's again like there's nothing in this layer that I can link to but if I go in here and I do uh, layer layer styles and color overlay it's gonna give me this big bright red color overlay and this is where you can link this color to that color control right there. So I'm going to click on this little pick whip for the color of the color overlay, drag it up there, drop it there. And now whatever I change this color control to is what will change the color. So this is linked to our color overlay that we added. That's how color control works. Let's mess around with some of these other ones, see what they do. Let's go to effect, uh, expression controls, 3D point control. Let's, let's come back to that. Let's go to angle control. Uh, so I guess this maybe you can just change the angle of something so maybe we can link let's see let's go to our transform properties here maybe we can go to rotation let's maybe link this to here so yeah I guess that can control the angle which you know I guess is useful somehow but I don't really know um, let's see what else we have effect expression controls checkbox control I'm gonna come back to that uh, layer control let's see so hmm Let's see, point control. So this is more, I guess, for your position. So you can do P, we can link our position to this. We'll move that around as well. So again, that's sort of helpful. Let's go check out another one here. Fix controls, pressure controls, slider control. Now you do use slider control a good bit, and this is great for, you can do things like uh, maybe some opacity, you can link opacity to it. So let's do T and we can do opacity and link it there uh, one thing that i do so now it's set to zero so if i bump this up it'll change the opacity uh, one thing i do a lot that i learned way back in the day from andrew kramer that uh, does video copilot and that i've had to refer to several times let me throw another solid back in here um I'll duplicate this and we'll scale this down we'll make this a different color so we use wiggle i use wiggle a lot and sometimes i need the wiggle to you know i use it on the camera or something um, and I want it to kind of slow down over time or as I'm sort of landing on the logo. So I want to scale this down. So if I have an expression on this, which is wiggle, so I'm going to do, I'm going to hit P on the keyboard and I'm going to, I'm going to hold down alt and option while I click on the stopwatch. That's going to give me this little window right here. I'm just going to type in wiggle. 
It's really the expression that everybody knows and really about the only one that I ever use or can remember. And then I'm gonna type in some numbers. So I'm gonna put, uh, really the first number is sort of your, your frequency. So I'm just gonna say two and I'm gonna do a comma. And the next number is really the amount. So let's, let's say 40, right? So I'm gonna click off this. And now if I watch this back, this little um, thing is gonna, the position is gonna move all over the place. And it's just kind of randomly doing it, right? Why would I use the expression control? So I don't have any way of controlling this. Like I can't tell it to stop. I can't, can, I can't really keyframe these numbers. It's just gonna randomly wiggle. But if I go in here and add an expression control, uh, the slider one, then I can, I control that. So I'm gonna click on our medium gray, lime, green, solid, whatever, and click on layer, sorry, effect, expression control, and slider control. So we'll call this, uh, wiggle amount wiggle amount and now I can go in here hit you on the keyboard a couple of times to reveal everything all right this needs to stop moving okay so now I can go in here and I can highlight these numbers just like that and then I can click this little uh, pick whip right here to the the expression position drag it up to here and let go then it automatically fills in what this is so this is saying the effect of the wiggle amount is going to be part of the slider so we are going to now control the amount of wiggle that our green square is going to do so i can go in here i can click on the stopwatch and we can call this 60 and then over time i can tell it go all the way back down to zero and so now if i hit you on the keyboard you can see now i have some keyframes that it's been set so now if we watch that back you can see it wiggling and it's going to slowly come to a stop Boom. So that is a great way to use the slider control. I use that a, a good bit uh, when it comes to, to messing with wiggle. All right, so that covers the slider control. The other one we can cover is the checkbox control. So let's click on that and we're gonna drop this in here. I can delete this wiggle for now. So I always have to look up how to do this one because I can never remember. So I'm gonna pull it up really quick and then I'll show you. All right, so Premium Beat has a great um, little breakdown of the um, using the checkboxes for this. So I always end up referring to this site um, for this actual expression because I can never remember. So let's say we want to, whatever this checkbox check is, let's say we wanna control the opacity. So if, I, if it's on, our layer's on. If it's off, our layer's off. So let's scroll down here and figure out what the one is. And this is the expression right here that I always, I can never, I can never remember. So I'm going to highlight this and, and copy it. And I'm going to go back here and we have our lime green solid. So this is what I want to put that expression on the thing that I want to control. So I'm going to control uh, the opacity. So I'm going to hit T on the keyboard for opacity. I'm going to hold down alt and option to click that stopwatch. And then I can paste that into the expression box now we need to change this so i'm going to highlight all of this here and we want to pick whip to the checkbox so i'm going to click on that up here drop it right there boom okay so now you can see it disappeared because the checkbox is off but if i click this back on our checkbox comes back on this is great for building some sort of templates um, so if you needed to you know have things turn off or turn on so for a good example in the uh, stranger things project that we made in this video, you have the option to uh, quickly turn off the white text that's popping up here if you don't want to see um, the the credits, really. So uh, we built that with the checkbox option inside of this project. So that's little things like that are great for the checkbox. Uh, not sure why else you would really want to use it, but um, maybe there is. Anyway, so that is an overview of what I know about expression controls. I guess I really need to look into what some of these other ones are. There's a lot I don't know. Uh, I just thought it would be fun to get in there and kind of mess with um, what those are and show you how to use those. So feel free to play around with those. I wanted to at least give you an idea of how what they were and why they why they are the way they are and also give you a look into the Essential Graphics stuff. So that's your look at the Essential Graphics uh, tool inside of After Effects as well as some expression controls. I hope that that's something that you can use in the future um, and that you can find super helpful for projects that you may need to share with other people. I um, hope you enjoyed it and we will see you on the next one. Thanks. Bye.